morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us here at City View Christian Center, uh, whether you're here in person or online. We are excited to uh, worship God this morning. Uh, we are going to shout with everything we have because sometimes you just got to shout and sometimes you got to just praise God anywhere you can in every situation, every moment. So whatever you're facing this morning, let's just bring it to God and let's just shout the victory. Amen. Amen.
Father God, we are so grateful. We're so grateful that we live in a free country, a country that we don't take for granted, that we can come and freely worship you and honor you and gather together. We don't have to meet underground. We can, we can meet in each other's homes. We can meet here in the community. We can meet in the field. We can meet in the streets, whatever it is. We can meet in coffee shops. We can openly honor and worship you. Father God, we are so grateful that you are our living hope. That you're not, you're not a dead God. You're not a God that has no power. You're not a God that's just out there to punish us, to cause us trouble or pain. But you are our living, loving hope. Father God, we are so grateful for you this morning. So grateful for everything you're doing in our lives. We just invite your Holy Spirit to just speak to each and every one of us this morning. Whatever that situation is that we're facing, there's nothing too big for you. There's nothing that isn't under your name. Your name is above every name. You are the highest, you're the greatest. You're holy now, yesterday, and forever. You're so grateful just want to honor you this morning with our voices. We want to honor you just by the simple fact that we came here this morning, that we've gathered together. We want to lift up your name to the rightful place that it should be, which is first place in each and every one of our lives. There should be no other thing that is more important than you in our lives. And we don't say that out of a obligation we don't say that because that's what you've told us to do we say that because that's the example that you set for us you loved us more than anything else you loved us so much that you sent your, your only son to come down to the earth to live a perfect life to die on the cross and be risen from the, risen from the grave when that happened, when he died and when he rose from the grave, he conquered every sin, conquered every situation, every, every sickness, every poverty, every lack, every single thing that is a curse, every, every single thing that is meant to stop us up, all the challenges and all the struggles that we face here on this earth. Jesus came. So, Father God, when we come to you this morning and we decide that we will put you first, we're doing that because you loved us first. We want to love you more than anything else in our lives. We want you to be a part of every other part of our lives. We invite you in this morning. We invite you into each and every one of our hearts. We invite you into each and every one of our situations. We just turn to you, we honor you, we worship you, because you are holy and loving forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Above them all, and the angels cry. 
We thank you today for our country. And again, God, we thank you that we could come here today and worship you and not be afraid that someone would come through the door and tell us to stop. Father, we know that is not the case in many, 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 many areas around the world today. And God, we lift up those believers, Father, that are living in those circumstances. Father, help us not to take what we have here for granted, God. I pray, Father, God is stirring in all our hearts to guard, to stand on guard for Canada and what our nation stood for, Father. So many values have been eroded, and God, we just pray today that as we have honored our, our veterans yesterday, Father God, we have, we have remembered what they did, Father, their sacrifice for us, God, today. We remember what Jesus did, and we stand on guard for Canada. Father God, you, you, you have told us in your word very clearly, Father God, that these days would come. Days would come when people would turn their hearts away from you, from their own families. God, they would give in to all types of sin and, and Im immorality. And God, we're seeing that in front of our eyes. God, I pray that none of that touches our children, our precious children, or our youth, God. We know it's already come in such a flood against them. Today we stand against that in Jesus' name. For every youth, for every young Christian that we know, in the name of Jesus, we declare, Satan, you will not have their lives. You are a liar and a deceiver. And we declare in Jesus' name that they are, they are destined to live their lives for God and not for you, in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Father God, for every parent here today that is raising young children. God, they need your wisdom like never before. God, we call on that wisdom, God. Flood their hearts, Father God, with your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit wisdom to know how to maneuver through just everything that is around the world, uh, around their children right now. And Father, we thank you that we don't need to be in fear because we have you, God. No matter what comes, Father God, you said you would never leave us, never, never forsake us. And so we give you praise for that today. We pray for our leaders in our city, Father, our province and our country, that they would have a stirring in their hearts to turn to you. In Jesus' name, we just believe, Father God, that you are moving. You are moving like never before. And we just stand in awe of all that you're doing. We give you praise again today. Thank you, Father God, for this service. Continue to move in hearts. Continue to heal hearts. And continue to just show us your love. The love that you have for each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever, hear your peace. King of kings, 
Well, it's so good to worship the Lord. Amen. Be in his presence. Well, praise God. Thank you again, worship team, for leading us into God's presence. It was just such a wonderful time of worship and 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 even the prayer. There's, it just all went together because, you know what, we're seeking God. We're, we want to seek him. We want to be in his presence. I know the Bible says we're two or more gathered in his name. He is there in the midst of them. But you know what? We just know it. We just know when we come together as believers that it is God's heart that is manifested. He shows up. He shows up whenever we gather to honor him and to worship him. So, so thank you. Thank you again, worship team, for that. And Praise God. Last week, um, I uh, shared a message, and I, I talked a little bit about how we can be empowered and how God has gifts and places for us all. But I think I f- kind of forgot to tie it in really um, maybe as strong as I should have with the, what our vision is for the church. And so the title today of my message is Discovery Zone. Now, how many of you remember Discovery Zone? Okay, do you, do you remember Discovery Zone? Yeah. And it, it was like, if you don't know what Discovery Zone was, it was a, it was one of these play places where you would take your kids, you know, and you'd pay admission, and then they'd go on all these games and climb on all these things. I don't know what's the equivalent now. There's there's some all star indoor playground. I know there's a another party place where they go, and it, it's just it was a great place. But Discovery Zone. So what was the purpose for Discovery Zone? Why did they call it Discovery Zone? So kids could go there and, and discover things and learn things, and they'd interact with other kids and just have a great time, right? Well, guess what? Discovery Zone is part of our church vision. I don't know if you know that. Did you know that? It, when, we, when I say our, when I quote the mission statement that we often quote, okay, discover, there's a clue there, right? Discover real love and live life with purpose. That's the, the line that we always say. And you know what? We want people to discover that. We want to people to discover a real God, a living God, and how much he loves them. And we want to, them to discover their gifts and their purpose. And that's what I talked about last week, right? Let me just remind you of the passage that we were in. We were in Romans chapter 12. And I'll just read verses 1 and 2. And remember, I had picked it from the Passion Translation. It's just, so, it's so neat. Like, one of the things I love about different translations is you can read, read a passage of Scripture that you've maybe read a hundred times, and it's super familiar, maybe even memorized it as a kid growing up. But when you read it in a different translation, it kind of makes you stop and think about what it really says. So this is Romans 12, 1 and 2. It's a very familiar passage of Scripture. But in the Passion Translation, it says this, Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? Boy, how many need mercy in their life? I do. I I need mercy every day sometimes. To surrender yourselves to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices, and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship right? We were worshiping today. We were worshiping with our voices, and we were worshiping in song. But this, by living a life that is honoring to God, that shows genuine expression of worship, right? And then verse 2, of course, is the, it kind of puts it in perspective, right? Stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit. Think about that, being inwardly transformed you know, uh, we the other night when we were at uh, Life Group, somebody reminded us of the song that um, you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. We used to sing that song. Somebody, some of you might remember it, right? But the thing is, no matter what our experience is, no matter what our past is, no matter where we're coming from, no matter what, what, like what our frame of mind, even when you walked through that door and you came into the building, maybe there were things that were on your mind. But you know what? The Holy, Spirit's want, the Holy Spirit wants to transform you. And, and so be ye, be, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through the total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Okay, and then last week we then talked about the next part of that passage that is the, um, it goes into the gifts, where he looked at the diff- different gifts that God has placed in each of us. 
And really, our vision, okay, let me go back and say it again, discover real love and live life with purpose. Our vision at City View is for everyone to discover their gifts. God has placed things in every one of you, and we want you to discover that. And, and live it out. Use your gifts to the fullest. God cares about you so much that he placed inside of every one of you something unique, special, and necessary to the family of God. Okay, now when I think of something being necessary, okay, and it's really hard not to... Um, you know, get off topic here thinking about hockey. But I'm going to go back, I'm going to roll a clock back a few years, and I had the opportunity to coach some basketball. And, uh, and I had the opportunity, to actually, uh, at one point I coached Dale in basketball. I was one of the assistant coaches. But then later, Dale and I got the opportunity to coach together. And one of the things that we did together, and I remember actually one that stands out in my mind, Donovan and and Dale were coaching a team together, and we had what were called tryouts. Now, how many know about tryouts? I was talking to somebody this week about basketball tryouts, right? And, uh, you know, it, it, I, there are situations, you know, you go for the tryout, and you don't understand why, maybe why the coach picked you or what the, what the deal was. And, but yet the coach has a specific purpose in trying to put together the team. And the, the, the coach is trying to pick the players that will best assist them to be a winning uh, team, right? And when I, think of, when I think of us, you know, picking players, I remember standing, you know, with Dale, watching guys, you know, do things as they were trying out for the team. And um, I know Donovan and Dale had to do that when they were picking. They coached a, a summer a summer games team in two years, I think, and they had to they had to pick, pick. They had a whole gymnasium full of kids who wanted to be on the team, but they could only take so many, right? And so they had to try and find the kids that had the skill set or the gifts, if you will. Okay. The, the ability to play a certain position. I mean, you don't want all post players, you don't want all guards, you know, you don't want all three-point shooters, like that's not gonna, prove, you know, it's not gonna create balance in your team. You wanna have different players with different functions within the team. Well, guess what? The church is like that. It's beautiful. There, we need every single person. We need the different giftings to fulfill what God has called us to do. But guess what the best part is about uh, being on God's team? Anybody know? Yeah, there's no cuts. No cuts, right? No cuts. And nobody gets cut from the team. And nobody gets fired. And I'll just leave it at that. Nobody gets fired, okay? Nobody gets cut. You're on the team and you're on the team because God put in you something extremely valuable so that you could be on the team. And so at City View, we are so happy that you are on our team. If you're here, you're part of the team. You're, you're a part, whether you know it or not. Maybe, maybe so far, maybe up to this point, you've just been, you know, warming those chairs, right? <laughs> okay. But guess what? God has a purpose and he has a plan for your life. And there's a reason that you're here. And we want, we want to encourage you to, to fulfill that and to experience that purpose. Well, okay. Let, what's the other part of the vision, okay, or what the uh, other part of the mission statement? It's, it's in the other part of Romans that we didn't uh, read last week. So let's just jump down there. So <clears throat> again, I'm still in the Passion Translation, but Romans 12, I'm going to pick it up at verse 9, and here's what it says. Let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another. And never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. In other words, don't be phonies. Be real people, right? Despise evil and embrace everything that is good and virtuous. Be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as members of one family. What do we always call our City View Church? We always call it family, right? We, we continue to say that. And people, there are people that have come in that have told me, I never went to a church before that they called it family. I don't know why not, because it's very biblical. But, you know, it, there's, there's, it's one thing to go to church, okay? And church just, you know, in, in, in I, can, I don't know how to say this right. The church within itself, if we just, yeah, read scriptures and do the things and everything and we meet together and all that, it can get very religious. It can get very formalized. That's, I mean, if you think back, you know, when you think back to even Luther, when he, you know, when he, 
got so upset with the Catholic Church and, you know, nailed his thesis to the front door of the, I think it was the Vatican or whatever, he, he was making a statement. He was saying, you guys have gotten so religious and so caught up in your traditions that you've lost what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And you know what we need to do? We need to remember that it is the Holy Spirit working in us that will make us like Christ, that will bring out the things in us, that will allow us to be the people of God, the family of God, right? Not just a religion. I don't, I, actually, I hate religion, okay, because it just becomes so formal and so impersonal. But I love family. And when I think of church, I think of family. I think of connections. I think of people being there for each other, standing together with each other, and doing the th kinds of things that it talks about here in Romans 12. Let me keep, I, I won't get too far off track or I'll never get finished this here. Okay, verse 10, be devoted tenderly to loving your fellow believers as members of one family. Try, I love this, try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor of one another. Wow, think about that one, right? Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor of one another. Then verse 11, be enthusiastic to serve the Lord. That's what I love about when the kids come forward and they, they're cheering and singing a song and then they go off, yay, we're going to children's church, right? Boy, they're enthusiastic. I wish we could all jump up and be just as enthusiastic, right? Be enthusiastic to serve the Lord, keeping your passion towards him boiling hot. Wow, that we were even praying about that as a worship team before we even started the service about it. Amen, right? About it being boiling hot. We want the fire of God to come in our in this place in our lives and just fire us up to do what he wants to do in this earth, right? Yet let me keep going. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. Wow. Verse 12. Let this hope burst forth within you, releasing a continual joy. Woo! A continual joy. I mean, sometimes we get happy about things, right? But you know what? A God-given a God type of joy. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how, like, let me use the comparison. It doesn't matter how many rockets are going off, right, over our heads. When we have the joy of the Lord, we know who our Lord is. We know who our Savior is. We know where our safety is. We know what our future is, right? And it's not governed by the circumstances around us. Amen? So, again, let this hope burst forth within you, releasing a continual joy. Don't give up in a time of trouble. But commune with God at all times. Spend time in his presence. Spend time with him, right? Take a constant interest in the needs of God's beloved people and respond by helping them. Wow, this is so practical, right? I mean, think about it. Take a constant interest in the needs of God's beloved people and respond by helping them and eagerly welcome people as guests into your home. You know, I, I know in society, when I grew up as a kid, when I was a little kid, I remember we practically, we pretty much knew everybody who lived on our block, right? I was on a, just a regular block. It had two sides to it, and it was just a regular, you know, street, and there was, you know, probably whatever it was, 15 houses on one side and 15 houses on the other side. We pretty much knew everybody who lived on our street. Okay, now I won't ask for a show of hands, but how many of you know anybody on your street outside of maybe the neighbors that you, you know, bump into right beside. We don't, you know, society has changed. People don't, they don't interact with their neighbors the way that they used to. That's the reason why community leagues exist, is to get people who do want to connect with others from the community, get them together. But they even struggle with getting, you know, people to join the Community League Association. I mean, I don't know how many members they have. I don't know what the number would be. But it's probably just a fraction of the number of people that live in this neighborhood, right? You know, we, we tend to keep to ourselves. It's like, well, you know, it's, it's good. I'll, I'll drive in the garage and close the door. And, you know, you know it's, it's nice as long as the show, snow is shoveled, you know, I'm good, right? Or whatever, or cut the grass. But we don't, we don't interact with our neighbors. And yet it says here, take a, const, a constant interest in the needs of God's beloved people and respond by helping them and eagerly welcome people as guests into your home. 
what do we see here? We see a, a people that are not only uh, empowered with God's gifts, but they're people that are using them to touch other lives. And that's what love is all about, right? Paul is encouraging us to make love the first and foremost thing in all that we do. Let love be the motivation. Let, let love be the determining factor, okay? You know, maybe it's not the most lovely person. Maybe they're, maybe they're not the easiest neighbors to get along with. But you know what? Is, am, do I want them to discover real love? The way that, I, that they'll discover real love is if I show them God's love, if I share love, right? Let love be the motivation for everything we do. And even Jesus, you know, we see in Scripture, in, in Luke 22, uh, Jesus, he was motivated by love. The reason that he went to the cross, the reason that he gave his life for all of us was for love. He, he prayed the night before he was crucified on the cross. He was prayed to the Father and he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Because we know that ultimately it's God who loves us. And his love was demonstrated by sending Jesus to the earth. That's why Jesus died on the cross. And I realize it's, it's Christmas season coming up, but Jesus came to the earth. He was born, you know, in a manger. He, he started out there, but that wasn't the, that wasn't the long-term game plan. The long-term game plan was that Jesus would grow up and would give his life. Why? For love. That's a demonstration of God's love for every one of us, right? Not my will, but yours be done. Jesus prayed it, right? So at City View, our vision is we want to create an environment of love, not just here in church, but everywhere that we go. Colossians 3.17, uh, uh, whatever you do, new, this is New King James, Colossians 3.17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And, you know, I, I think over the time, like since we've started, one of the things that many, many people have said about our church is that it's so loving and friendly when people come in. I hope that we never lose that. Please agree with me. We will never lose that. It is a, it's, it's a, it's what, one of the things that makes us, well, I guess I'll say unique because there are lots of churches. I know Pastor Gene and I, I remember at one point in our lives, we were, we were wanting to make a change in terms of churches. And so we, we said, okay, let's go. And we, we drove around to churches. How many have ever done this? We drove to different churches. We went to a bunch of different churches each Sunday. And some of them, I remember the, the funniest was the, we came into this church. Nobody greeted us. There was no ushers. There was no bulletins, nothing. So we, you know, we quietly came in and sat down on one of the benches, right? And about halfway through the service, the preacher got up and the pastor of the church got up and said, oh, hi, you guys, the new guys there on the back row, right? You know, oh, man, yikes. Were we embarrassed? Uh, did we ever go back? No. No, but the churches where people were friendly and welcoming. I mean, we have a sign out in the front. I hope, I hope it's not just a sign. I hope it's, I hope it's what every one of us, uh, you know, lives and believes, that where everyone is loved and where, where, you, where everyone is always welcome, right? We want people to come through that door and know that they're loved and that they're welcome. And it doesn't matter, you know, what, the, what their past is. You know, we've had people come into the church over the years that um, <clears throat> they, like, maybe they felt like they weren't welcome at other churches. In fact, some of them were specifically told, you can come here, but, you know, don't ever expect to be involved because of your past or whatever. But you know what? We're, we're not only a love church, we're a grace church too, right? And when, whatever the past is, what, whatever the experience of his life is, where, whatever your life experience has been, we want you to come into City View and know that we live by the Word of God, and the Word of God says to love everyone, to love people. And we want you to know that you're welcome. We want you to know that no matter what those tough situations are that you're, are that you're going through, people come in, I mean, there's people even in our congregation right now going through tough situations financially or maybe uh, physically or emotionally. There, you're, you've got a, a challenge there. Maybe there's a challenge with your family and you, you just, you don't even know what to do. But church needs to be the place where love covers it all. 
where we are so loving and so gracious and so accepting of people that they will come through that door and feel like, man, this is a place I want to be. Let me just read a little bit more in Romans just to to finish the context here. Romans 12, I'll pick it up at verse um, 14. I want, as I read this, I just want you to think. In fact, make it like a, do a little like a mental uh, checkbox thing in your mind as I go through this, okay? Speak blessing, not cursing, over those who reject and persecute you. Yikes, okay. Celebrate, verse 15, celebrate with those who celebrate and weep with those who grieve. There, you know, the Bible says, like, you know, people, sometimes people, they don't come through the door and everything's great. Sometimes they're really hurting. We need to be sensitive to that. We need to celebrate with those that have just, you know, won their victory or championship or whatever the breakthrough is in their life. But we need to weep with those who grieve. Live happily together in a spirit of harmony. And be as mindful of another's worth as you are your own. Don't live with a lofty mindset, thinking you're too important to serve others, but be willing to do menial tasks and identify with those who are humble-minded. Don't be smug or even think for a moment that you know it all. Wow. Uh, I don't even need to say anything. It's self-explanatory, right? Verse 17. Never hold a grudge, or try to get even. But plan your life around the noblest way to benefit others. Do your best to live as everybody's friend. Wow. Boy, there's a verse. You could probably preach preach a whole series of messages on that one, right? Do your best to live as everybody's friend. You know, it's, it's, I always think of the proverb, it's, you know, sometimes people say, well, I don't have any friends. Well, the proverb says, <laughs> the person who show, is, is friendly to others will, is the one who will have friends, right? He who shows himself friendly will have friends. That's what the proverb says, right? And that's what this is saying. <laughs> Do your best to live as everybody's friend. Verse 19, beloved, don't be obsessed with taking revenge, but leave that to God's righteous judgment, for the scriptures say, vengeance is mine and I will repay, says the Lord. Again, this is so self-explanatory. I, and I'm not, I feel like I'm just reading scripture here, not preaching, but it, like God will take care of the situations. And if you've been wronged and if something wrong has done, you need to pray and you need to commit that person into God's hands and he will take care of that situation. He will change what needs to be changed. Amen? Verse 20, if your enemy is hungry, buy him lunch. Again, I better not ask for a show of hands. When's the last time you took your enemy? I take my friends out for lunch all the time. I love going out for lunch, right, with people I enjoy being with. I can't remember... I can't remember the last time I took my enemies for lunch. Okay. Anyhow, win him over with kindness. But you know what? That's what we need to do. We need to win people over with kindness because that demonstrates that we are operating in God's gifts, right? For your surprising generosity will awaken his conscience and God will reward you with favor. How many want favor in their lives, right? Let's, Let's show kindness to other people. Never let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with good. And here's the, my, my caution is, you know, if we do that like a checklist, what's, what, you know, how many checkboxes do we get? What is your love walk like? How do you treat people around you? When you go out there in the world, when you, how, you know, how do you treat the waiter or the waitress? How do you treat that, that, that lady who's working her second or third job and she's in the checkout lineup at Walmart and, and you're grumpy with her because the computer didn't scan the right price or something, right? You need, we need to be showing Jesus' love everywhere we go. It needs to be all over us. The love of Jesus is what's going to, what's going to draw people to, to Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 13, we all know the whole chapter, but the basis of the whole chapter is without love. Everything we're doing profits nothing, right? We, it needs to be based on love. And, and, you know, not only 
do we need to discover God's love, but we need to discover and learn how to share that, right? Remember the verse that says, uh, love God and love people? Well, guess what? You know, there's two parts to that. It's, sometimes it's easier to love God, right, than it is the people. But God, but God is saying we need to love those around us. He's saying we need to, we need to be his hands and feet. We need to be the example of Jesus in this earth, right? Now, my title today was The Discovery Zone. So our vision at City View is to see everyone experience the best of what God has for you. We want you to discover what the true love of God is all about. We want you to discover what it means to be a part of a church family. We want you to discover the power of the Holy Spirit operating in your lives. Amen? We want to discover the gifts of the Spirit. We, that's your gifts and the gifts that the Holy Spirit puts inside of you. We want you to discover your purpose in life, and we want to, you to discover your purpose within the family of God. So what are we seeing? We want City View to be your discovery zone, right? This needs to be the zone and the place and the, and I mean, you should be excited. I don't know if this is a good comparison, but I don't know, when we used to take the boys to Discovery Zone, they couldn't get past the entrance fast enough. You know, come on, hurry up, Dad, pay for our admission so we can go in and discover all these amazing toys. Man, I'd love it if people were that excited to get to church on Sunday, right? We could come in here and, yes, I can hardly wait to get to church. I can hardly wait to, to, to go and be a part of what's happening. I can hardly wait to get there and, and worship with my other, you know, believers and my friends that I've made. The family of God, right? And, yes, I understand, you know, from biblical perspective that the true family of God is the body of Christ. And that, you know, represents everywhere, every you know, people everywhere that are part of the body of Christ. But God has put us together as a church, as a, we're a group of people, and we can be a family, and we can love on each other, and interact with each other, and care for each other, and share with each other, and for each other. And so, we want City View to be our discovery zone. And so, the question today is, will you do your part to spread the love of God to this community, and to this city, and to everyone you come in contact with. You know, I, I don't know if you struggle with it, but some of the things that come to my mind when I read this whole passage in Romans, and, you know, we just need to lay aside the things that are not important, right? We need to focus on the things that matter the most. What matters the most is my relationship with God and then my relationship with other people, my relationship with, with my church family, with my real family, I mean, um, you know, how many times do we, have we heard, it's, you know, it's a sad, it's sad when we hear stories of, of like we heard a story the other night of a, a girl, she grew up in a Christian home. She should have had everything that she needed, and yet she was, she was so seeking, you know, what, love and acceptance. She was just lost without, you know, without the reality of, and, and she grew up in a Christian home. That was the thing. But she was still out there doing drugs and all kinds of things. And you know what? God wants this, our church, and every church for that matter. That, that would be his heart. But especially because I'm here and City View is our church, I want our church to be one where we are so loving and so caring for everyone that comes through that door. And, you know, I'll just say, like, we... I mean, we, you can go back and read it. You go back and read Romans 12. That's, that's my challenge to you. Read this and read it enough times till you get what your response, what your godly response and loving response should be to the people that are around you, right? And we, we should be just, like, love should just ooze out of us, right? When somebody squeezes my hand, they should just feel loved. When somebody gets a hug from me, they just should feel loved. When somebody comes to that door and, and they're greeted, they should feel loved. That should be the overall thing. And then, then our, our thing that we're talking about, our, you know, our mission statement, for we want everyone to discover real love. It'll be a reality. It'll be a reality here. You know what? As we close today, I want to challenge you. And this is, I, maybe this is not a, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say what's on my heart. I want to challenge every one of you to think about the areas in your life that Romans 12 pertains to. I want you to think, are there any, are there any places where I'm not checking things off? Maybe I'm still grumpy with that person at work. Or maybe, maybe, I, maybe I have some relatives that they just rub me the wrong way every time we're together. And I'm nasty to them or I don't want to be with them. But you know what? Our mission, our purpose, our, our really, our reason for living is to share Jesus and to share the love of God throughout the earth. And so I want to challenge you today. Go back and reread it and, and just think and say, God, is there things that I need to address in my life? Are there some things where I'm not letting your love flow through me? Am I still being chippy with people? Am I still being rude with people? And I want that to be the, the thing. You, you talk to God about it, okay? I mean, yeah, sure. I, you know, we were talking about operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit the other night. Sure, I could ask God to give me a word of knowledge, and I could start calling people out, you know, and, and you know, I could, I could point to people and say, you need to deal with this, this in your life. But you know what? <laughs> I'm going to be gracious today. I'm going to say, I don't want to do that, okay? Because sometimes that has the wrong result, okay? But it, I'm challenging you to go home and spend time meditating on this passage of Scripture and saying, God, what things do I need to fix in my life? Where, where do I need to fix the check marks? Where am I not representing Jesus? You know, when we go out in the world, when we, where, where, wherever we go, people, people should be asking us, what's different? What's different about you? What is different about you? And it should be, we have the love of Jesus flowing through us at all times. And yeah, Sure, we, we preach faith in this church and standing on God's word and believing things. And yes, we preach grace that no matter what, you know, we believe that your sins are forgiven because of Jesus' blood. It's not because of things that you do or, or anything that you've done along the way that gets you to heaven. It is the grace of God. But you know what? We need to be the vessels. We need to be the ones who share that love. Why don't you stand up with me as we close? Father, we just thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you that your word is so clear and it's so true. Father, as we come to you this morning, I thank you that you love us so much. I thank you that your love never fails. Your love for us never fails. But Father God, we want to be your vessels of honor. We want to be the people that are full of your love. Because we're the ones in the earth, we're the ones who are spreading the love of Jesus. Father, forgive us if there are areas of our life where we've done things that have maybe turned people off, turned them off to, to the gospel, turned them off to Jesus, turned them off to church. Lord, church should be the most loving place. God, that's the way you designed it. And so, Father, just show and reveal to each one of us the areas that we need to surrender to you. And the areas where we need to transform our mind and our thinking and our attitudes so that love will ooze out of us in every situation. You know, as we're praying, I feel like I need to ask, if you are here and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you've never opened your life to that forgiveness. You know, Jesus went to the cross he died on the cross for all of us. But it's up to us to accept it. It's up, up to us to receive it. And if you've never accepted Jesus into your life, but you'd like me to pray for you today, I just wonder if you could slip your hand up if there's anybody like that. Okay. Praise God. Father, we thank you and praise you today that you love us so much. I thank you that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. So, Lord, we surrender our lives to you today. I just wonder if everybody could just, just pray a simple prayer with me. 
Just I'll, I'll say a phrase you repeat after me. Say, Father God, I come to you today. I know that I can't make it on my own. I need you in my life. And I need Jesus to forgive me for my past. Heal me today. Make me new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And give me a hope and a future in heaven with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me for the first time, you are now born again. You are now a child of God. You know what? We want to pray for you, and we want to pray with you. And I, man, I'm I'm a little bit limited, but can I call Tom and Linda? Are you okay for today? And Jean and Vern, are you okay to pray for people today? I'm going to invite them to come forward. Okay, and let's just close with this: If you did pray that prayer for the first time, can you come to one of these couples and tell them so they can pray with you, and then? Um, if you have another need in your life, maybe it's you just want a touch of God today. Maybe you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We've talked about love. We talked about gifts. You want to be filled? Please come and again, come to one of these couples and tell them what you're coming forward for so they can pray with you. If you need a healing in your body or a financial breakthrough, whatever the need is that you're facing today, these couples are available and they'll be here for a few minutes to pray with you. But Please come, come and let them pray for you. Amen. Okay, praise God. We thank you, Father, for this day that you've given us. Lord, I thank you that we can come together. I thank you that City View is a place where love flows unconditionally. Well, Father, we love everyone, but Lord, let, let that love be shown in all of our lives. Father, we thank you for your glory for your goodness and for your grace. We give, give it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.